Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see how we can load CSV data into the lake house and query it with the SQL endpoints. So this particular video is in continuation to my previous video where we created a lake house, right? And we saw different ways to load the data into the lake house. In this case, we are going to load in this particular video, we are going to load the data from CSV from a CSV file into the lake house, convert it into a table and query it using the SQL endpoints. So let's move ahead. But before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn as well as on Instagram. And I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So especially for this fabric, I do recommend watching all my videos sequentially and practicing it side by side so that you get a really good hands on and understanding on the fabric. So let's move ahead. We will go to the, the lake house that we created as part of our previous workspace. So if you see, we are into our data engineering experience. And when we are in the data engineering experience, you can see it shows quick access. So these are the, you know, uh, these are the items that I used, you know, uh, or these are for my quick access. If I can, I, if I want, I can add my favorites over here as well. And if I click on my workspaces over here, I already have created fabric workspace as part of the previous videos. So I'll just simply click on my fabric workspace. So now the moment I clicked on the fabric workspace, you can already see that I have a lake house here, which we created previously. And within this lake house, we also have semantic model and SQL analytics endpoint, which we discussed that both of these gets created as part of the lake house by default. So when you create a lake house by default, there will be a semantic model, which you can use for the Power BI as well as SQL analytics endpoint, which will help you to connect to any SQL to any tool that helps you to query the data through SQL, right? So it will create SQL endpoint as well. Now let me click on the lake house. Remember that within, within a particular workspace, there can be n number of lake house. You can create an, you can create a new lake house again. So you can create as many lake house as you want. So let me click on, uh, you know, the lake house that we created. And then you can see there's something called as tables and files over here. Now, if I click on get data, I have these different ways in which I can load the data. I can upload a file directly from my system. I can create a new data pipeline. I can create a new data flow gen two. I can create a new shortcut. I can use new event stream. So using all of these methods, I can actually get the data. And also uh, we are going to go through each of these in detail using different, different file formats. We are going to go through each of these methods in our videos. So today we are going to use upload files over here. And the moment I go here, I'll click on browse over here and I'm going to pick a customer's file. You can pick up any file that you have. And I'm just going to click on open. If you have the file already, you can click on overwrite. I don't have the file already present. So let me simply click on upload. Ignore this. Okay. This is just, uh, it's already deleted. Now you can see in the file section, <clears throat> you already have customers.csv file, right? Now, in case you are uploading a CSV or a JSON file, you can simply click on the file and you can actually preview that file, you know? But uh, in case you have uploaded any Parquet file, then in that case, uh, you cannot preview it. So preview typically depends on the type of file that you have uploaded. Now, similarly, you can click on three dots over here and you can see that you can rename this particular file. If you want to, you can delete this and you can go to the properties as well. So the moment you go to the properties, you can see the name over here, customers.csv and the URL. So in case you want to access this file, right, this is the URL. And I've explained this in one of my previous video as well, that if you want to access any particular item in fabric, you can use this URL path. Right. So it is one lake dot DFS dot fabric dot Microsoft dot com. And then it will be your workspace name. Right. And after that, you need to put the path of the item that you want to access. So let's move ahead. Now, remember that this is just a CSV file. Now, in order to query it, you need to convert it into a table. Now, when I say table, this is the table over here. Right now, there is no table present, but in order to query this particular file, you need to have it 
in a tabular format in a in a table in which is basically the delta table which is a much more optimized table that we have so to do that we can simply click on these three dots and you can see that it says load to table now you can also see it has a triangle over here this triangle means it's a delta table you can create a new table or you can load the data to an existing table as well if it's there but in our case we are starting fresh and we are going to click on the new table so the moment we click on new table let me just click it over here you will see what will have what will start happening a new table will start getting created now in this case they are going to ask you what is the table name right you have to provide the table name i will leave it as customers if you want to use headers for the column names you can check this option and the separator if you have any remember that they also say that separator cannot use these following basically you know the quotes and your brackets so let me simply click on the load the moment i start clicking on load you can actually see that it has started loading customers.csv to a table now it is a delta table it's a special type of table it has all asset properties at the same time it is very efficient and optimized now you guys can see that a table has been created which is nothing but the customers and if i click on this expand button you can actually go ahead and see all the details of the table you know the data type is mentioned over here the customer key if you see is one two three customer name is abc which is nothing but string right you can just hover over it it will show you a string this one one two three is as integer birth date if you see there is a timestamp symbol as well right so the first symbol symbolically it is showing you the data types and then it is showing you the field names right and also if i go go uh, to those three dots over here i can actually open this particular table in a notebook right which we will do later on not right now we can rename this table again we can delete it we can view files which we will do right now and okay let's go with the view files right now so the moment i click on these view files <clears throat> so this is what exactly this is a delta table right when i say delta table it's a special type of compressed parquet table with asset compliance right so snappy compression is there and it's a parquet file and then it has transactional log so when i say transactional log this is a separate folder which takes care of all the changes that you are doing to this table when you're creating a table deleting any record updating a particular record inserting a row anything you are doing that information will go to this delta log if you go inside it you can see this json and again basically this is where uh, you know the changes are being stored right and this is the this is your table actually now if i click on this table you can actually see that it starts loading the preview for this particular table right now this is how my data looks like this is what the table is all about and it has started showing you the rows as well now if you go to the top option right now you remember that there was a sql endpoint also that was created right as this file was created now uh, at the top where you see the settings option below that you have something called as lake house now if you go to the sql analytics endpoint right i've just clicked on the sql analytics endpoint over here now you will actually see that the same table right that your lake house uh, has there is a different ui that gets popped up over here now this ui is nothing but it's a sql analytics endpoint ui now with the name you might get a bit confused with the sql analytics endpoint name yes this is uh, this basically helps you to connect to any uh you know uh, to any tool that will help you to query the data using sql but at the same time even here also you can actually query the data so you can actually see the whole ui has changed it has come become like you know a database itself you have dbo you have schema you have dbo you have the customer table and then you know you have the <clears throat> if i go here views function stored procedure it is typically acting like a database and then you have the information schema as well system tables everything is there so now if you see and at the bottom you can see the data so right now you, we are at the data that is why you are able to see the data preview over here now if you click on query 
right? I should, I can actually go ahead and query my data over here, right? Now to do that, let me just simply write a query, select, let me take a, let me take a column name over here, let's say customer name, okay, let's call it as customer name. from customers right so the moment i do that i can actually run my query and you can see that it started running the query right you can write any query you can you know group it by the gender and get the yearly income based on a gender or anything of that sort right so this is something that you can actually see Query doesn't really matter here, but the whole point is that you can actually write any query like a SQL query over here and it will be able to give you the output. In the messages section, you can see it tells you the execution time and anything really, any information related to your query. And then you have the results section. If you want, you can open it in the Excel as well. You know, you can also explore this data using the visualization. Maybe, you know, it's in preview right now. Maybe they add more details to it later on so this is basically you know how you can actually query your uh, you know the data as well and if you want you can save your query so you can save it as a view or anything of that sort now you can actually see even to save it as a view you need to copy the whole select statement and then you can click on save as a view then it will ask you for the schema and the view name right and then you can click on ok and it will save it as a view so let's say i, I call it as sample view right and i can uh, sample underscore view and i can click on okay so what it will do it will create uh you know a sample view as well if you uh, you know and this is all about how you can actually query your data but remember that you have something called as model as well over here right so the moment you click on the model over here what it will do is whatever data that you have in your tables right whatever tables you have or whatever data that, that you have it will try to create a you know a, a whole full-fledged model out of it for your power bi report so you can see you have a customer tables and then based on your query history it is trying to fetch the data from the logs and it is trying to say okay these are the frequently run queries these are your long running queries so based on that it is trying to fetch you know and this is a sample view that we created right so these are this is nothing but a model that has been created by default you can use this uh, model as well for uh, you know th th this model is basically coming from your whole logs your system tables and how you have uh, put all your tables within the lake house similarly if you look at this default semantic objects you know, uh, this default semantic objects is also something related to the Power BI, which we are going to discuss as we go ahead. And if you want to go and create a new SQL query, a new visual query or a new report, right? But all these things, you can do it within the SQL analytics endpoint. Now, if I go back to the lake house, then you will see the whole UI changes again, right? So this is all about how you can load the data into a file, right? And from the, this customers.csv file, you can go ahead, create a table, and you can, you know, uh, through this table, we can, you know, you can we can query this data through Spark in a notebook, as well as we can create, you know, multiple data flows using this particular uh, table. And we can build reports out of this table. We can query this data as well. So I hope you understood whatever information I was trying to provide you in this video. Uh, in case you did not understand anything, I do recommend watching this video again because uh, there are a lot many things which are told in this one video. I will try to cover the rest of the part in the other videos as well. So I hope you like this video. Thank you so much for being till here. But do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for being till here.